Okay, give me another song, y'all. Let's go. We're glad to be in the service. Yes. One more time. Hallelujah. Somebody get that tamarind. <laughs> <clears throat> Bear with us, family. We have a very, very choppy internet connection today. It is buffering on our end, even so. Yeah. Nonetheless, uh, the word of Yah shall go forth. Hallelujah. We are indeed glad to be in the service one more time. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. single day is a barocking, right? Yes, it is. Hallelujah. This is the day that Yahuwah hath made. We no, shall, shall rejoice and, and be glad, glad in, in this day. day. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank y'all for this day, you know. It's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is calling for you. Mm -hmm. Will you answer to her call? You know, um, one passage of scripture that I was always fascinated with when I was young, a young man, I started reading scripture back when I was a teenager, and it was the seventh and eighth chapter of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. And I read through that chapter, it was so fascinating mm -hmm. to listen to Solomon, how he looked through the case when he saw among the simple ones, one that was void of understanding. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that and he said, call wisdom thy sister and understanding thy kinswoman, I said, it's something to this. I knew then that it was something to this. Yes. And so I said, man, I'm going to have to look into this and study it. And I must have read that passage two, three hundred times, you know, mm -hmm. just reading and trying to get an understanding and trying to know what's going on. But first of all, I want you to understand where the wisdom comes from. Where did wisdom come from, everyone? 
from above, from the most right. high. Come from the most high. Exactly. It comes from above. It comes from Yah. Okay. Now I got a scripture. Let's go to the scripture. This is Exodus chapter 28, verse 3. And I'm going to have Sophia, you're going to read it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exodus 28, verse 3. And you speak to all the wise of heart whom have I filled with a spirit of wisdom. Okay. And they shall make the garment of a heron and to Kadesh him for him to serve as Kohen to me. Okay. And basically, it's talking about Aaron. It says, Garments to consecrate him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Okay. So now you hear that. So Yah is saying basically that I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Whom I Yah has filled with the spirit of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So there's so, a spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom <laughs> that only comes from Yahuwah. That only comes from Yahuwah. Okay. Let's go to one more scripture. Before we get into the Proverbs scriptures, I wanted to have it go through these first. Uh, this is 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29. Rebecca, you're going to read it. I should step away for a moment. Oh, okay. Sophia, you can get that for us. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29. And Elohim gave Shalom Mon, Solomon, mm -hmm. exceeding great wisdom and understanding and largeness of heart like the sand of the sea shore. Okay. So Elohim gave Solomon all that wisdom yes. he had. Mm -hmm. We know according to the scripture, Solomon was the wisest man in the world. Okay. Yes. And who did he get, where did he get it from? It was a gift from El from the Most High. From Yah. That's <laughs> okay. right. Now, so then now that we know that it comes from Yah, that Yah have to give it to you, we have to figure out what do we have to do for him to give it to us. Yeah. We have to be a certain way for Yah to That's give right. us that kind of wisdom. Okay. And there's a reason why it wants me to say yes. that because uh, <laughs> the scripture also outlines, it says, the wisdom of this world. So there's another wisdom too. It says the wisdom of this world That's right. is foolishness to Yah. So not everybody that is speaking wisely in a particular area has wisdom from Yah. That's right. We have to understand the difference. He's, he made a difference. There yeah. is a wisdom that yeah. comes from above, from him, yes. but then there's the wisdom of this world. That's right. And so we got to understand the difference of the two. That's right. So a person can know the scriptures from cover to cover. Mm -hmm. They can have a little insight on those scriptures from cover to cover, right? That's knowledge. That's knowledge. <laughs> They may even understand it some, right? Mm, that's understanding. <laughs> <laughs> that's not wisdom. Right. Okay, there's a difference in the two. Right, right, because wisdom can actually come from a person who can't even read. Wow, did you hear that? <laughs> you see, wisdom, that's why it's a gift from Yah. Yeah. You see, knowledge and understanding is something that you can obtain. That's right. Uh, from studying or from other people sharing information with you or reading or whatever, knowledge and understanding. You yes. Get. But wisdom is only something you can get from Yah, which is why a person that is blind could get wisdom because they, can, they can't read. Or a person who can't read or some would call illiterate can get wisdom from Yah. That's right. And that's mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. So now, let's start at the beginning of it. Okay, mm -hmm. let's start at the beginning of, okay, what must I do first to begin to receive wisdom from Yah? We're going to go to the beginning of it. Let's go to yes. um, Psalms chapter 11, uh, 111, verse 10. And Deborah, I'm going to have you read this one. This is one of my favorite scriptures. So this is the beginning of it. This is how you get it, you all. Uh, this is the first thing you must do. So we are going to Psalms 111. Psalms 111, the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what verse are we reading? 10. 
Okay, Psalms 111, verse 10. Yes, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. Mm. <laughs> A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endures for his praises endure forever. Now, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. Wow. Now remember the message we did um, a week ago or so where I talked about Yah's gonna gonna um, restore the fear. <laughs> He's mm -hmm. gonna reestablish the fear yes. among his people. Yes. That's now what did he call his people in the scriptures? Satish. Stupid. Oh. He Rebellious. called them stupid and sottish. Why are they stupid and sottish? Because they reject wisdom. And they got no fear. And they have no fear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you see, it's right there in the word. When you look at it, it's right there. He called the sottish and stupid because we don't have any fear. That's why we don't have any wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. It's tying all together in the scriptures. Yes. There's no fear of Yah in the land. That's why there's no wisdom. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Pay attention. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, look at verse, um, this is Proverbs. We're going to go to Proverbs now. It's going to get juicy now, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 7, chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 1. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> verse 7. Verse 7. Yeah. The fear of Yahuwah, there it is again. Yep. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge mm -hmm. as well. So it's the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Yep. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay. So now this wisdom, this knowledge that it's talking about here, you got to pay attention. It's not, it's not just talking about just any knowledge that you right. just get from reading or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It's, understand what wisdom means. Now, wisdom is the ability to use knowledge effectively. That's what wisdom means. So you mm -hmm. can have knowledge and not know how to use it, right? Wisdom gives you the understanding or the ability to be able to use that knowledge or to apply it to your life. Yes. See, it's just in a book if you don't apply it to your life. Right. It's still in the book. You you don't know nothing about that. You can tell me all day long about this and about that, but you don't know nothing about that. For instance, you know about healing, right? Do you understand it? You ever been healed? <laughs> you see the difference? Mm -hmm. You can talk about healing all you want to say, yeah, yeah, this person got healed, that person got healed. I read here about healing, read there about healing. But if you've never been healed, you don't have that testimony. Yes. This is like a person reading a book about auto mechanics. He can read it all he wants. You ever fix a car? Nope. Well, you you don't have that wisdom as a, as a true auto mechanic then does, right? So, do, so are we seeing the difference here? There's so much information out here in the world. Yes. But until that information becomes applied information or experienced, then you are just talking. You don't have a reference point other than hearing about it or um, right. knowing about it. That's right. That's the difference in uh, um, knowledge that comes from applied wisdom. That's right. If you simply know about something, like someone could tell you um, uh, the Empire State Building is beautiful. Yeah. Or it's tall. And you could then pass that information on because someone told you, so therefore you know. And you could say, hey, the Empire State Building is tall. And I hear it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But until you actually go there and you stand there and you look up, your only reference point is from secondhand information that's that someone right. told you, that's that you right. learned of through hearing. That's but right. when you learn it from seeing... That's yeah. why they say seeing is believing, yeah, right? that's right. So now you have a reference point because you've been there for yourself. And so that's why also when you bring that to a spiritual um, level, somebody, someone can tell you, somebody can tell you what it was like to be filled with the Ruach HaKadosh. And yes. so you're like, okay, okay, that sounds good. I can't wait, I can't wait. When you actually experience being filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, it's only going to become, it's only going to be knowledge of something someone told you or something that That's you right. heard That's but that right. experience is going to be far greater than hearing someone else's explanation That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, like a person for instance, a person, uh, you can say, man, that, that building is so tall it's incredible. You go there, you look up at it and you see how tall it is and wow, it's how tall. But take a trip up to the top of it and look down. That gives you a whole other perspective. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll yeah. be like, whoa, you know, I've been up on the, um, 
CN Tower. The World Trade Center, yeah, and the CN Tower. Yeah. Two tallest um, structures with World Trade Center is gone now. Yeah. But I've been up on top of both of those. Yeah, we both CN Tower was taller than everything, and that thing was I so high. I think it's high. something that beats that now. Probably so. I think so, but uh, we were up on the CN Tower, and... It's so high up on there. They have a glass floor that you walk up on. And I looked down, walked on that glass floor, and it was like, I was like, I can't do this. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to step back. Mm -hmm. And they even had a, an area with a railing around it. We can go over to the railing, but it was, it was fenced in, too, so don't nobody leap off of it or whatever, you know. But it was just creepily high. Glass. You know, it mm -hmm. was crazy high, you know. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is it's it's very um scary you know when you're looking up there and you're looking down it's a whole different perspective and that's what it's like but anyway now back to this wisdom thing so now let's look at uh let's go to proverbs chapter one again verse 20 let's read verse 20 and look at what it says here It says, when the wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. And matter of fact, I'm going to have, Sophia, I'm going to have you read it. Not, not Sophia, Rebecca. You read it. Chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 1, read 20 through the end of the chapter. Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the broad places. At the head of the noisy streets, she calls out, She cries out at the openings of the gate. In the city, she speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, would you love simplicity? And shall scoffers delight in their scuffling? And fools hate knowledge. Turn at my reproof. See, I pour out my spirit on you. I make my words known to you. Because I called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no one inclined. And you spurned all my counsel, and would not yield to my reproof. Let me also laugh at your calamity, mock when your dread comes. When your dread comes like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and ang anguish come upon you, let them then call on, on me, but I answer not. Let them seek me, but not find me, because they hate, hateth knowledge, and did not choose the reference of Yahuwah. They did not accept my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore, let them eat the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own counsels. For, turning, for the turning away of the simple ones slays them, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whoever listens to me dwells safe, safely and is at ease from the dread of evil. Okay. You're reading from the Hallelujah Scriptures? Yeah. Okay. I want to read this from this from these um, other scriptures here. And I want you to really listen to what's being said mm -hmm. here very carefully. Okay. Now, it talks about wisdom crying and all that, right? Wisdom is making her voice known and all that, right? Now, notice she says here in verse 22, <clears throat> How long, ye simple ones... Will ye love simplicity? Mm. So in other words, those are void of understanding. They're called simple. Okay? Yes. Now, you hear people talk about all kind of calling people simpletons and all that kind of stuff, right? But trust me, even those that sometimes call people simpletons are probably simpletons themselves. Yeah, that's a new terminology that's being used <laughs> to insult people. But yes. the scripture tells you what a real simp is. Yes, it does. It tells you and... Uh, it's very important that we understand and not latch on to all of these little trends of words that people yes. are using to try to control the actions of others. Yeah, that's right. Now it says, how long will you love simplicity, right? Simplicity is a simple one is a person that loves simplicity. Simplicity is a person who can't deal with anything um, deep or spiritual. Mm -hmm. They're really carnal. They may understand carnal things to the fullness of understanding something that's carnal or written, but they don't have the spiritual understanding. Mm -hmm. They don't have the, what? Mm -hmm. Revelation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now let's keep reading. Look at this. Now it says, the scorners delight in their scorning. The fools hate knowledge. Wow. Mm -hmm. A fool hate of knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, 
I will pour out my spirit upon you. If you turn from your reproof, right? I will make known my words unto you. So this is wisdom saying, I want to make my words known unto you, right? Because I have called and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Whoa, no man? Mm. You mean nobody wants wisdom? Mm. Wow. Nobody wants wisdom because they are too simple-minded. They have become addicted to slim simplicity. Mm -hmm. A person is addicted to simplicity. Now watch this, okay? Let's go further down. This is what it says. I want you to see this, right? Then it says, But ye have set at naught my counsels, and will make none of my reproof. I will laugh. I will also laugh at your calamity. So wisdom is saying, you know what? Because you didn't want to take my my uh, understanding, you didn't want to hear me. I was trying to tell you that what you were about to do was bad and that you shouldn't do it. You didn't want to hear me. Therefore, when that calamity come on you because of that thing you decide to do anyway, guess what? I'm going to laugh at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wisdom say, I'm going to laugh at your calamity and I will mock when your fear cometh. Mm. Why? When your fear cometh. Why? Because this ain't the fear of Yah. See, had they had the fear of Yah, they would have been like, oh, I'm too afraid to do this. I'm too, let me just make sure I'm, I'm doing this thing right. Wisdom was trying to give you wisdom, trying to tell you, be careful, right? You didn't want to be careful, right? Pay attention. When your fear cometh as a desolation and your destruction cometh as a, as a whirlwind, when the strength and anguish come upon you, then shall you come, call upon me. You're going to call upon me then, but I will not answer. You will seek wisdom early, but they shall not find me, is what she said. Mm -hmm. Wow. You ain't going to find me. For that they that hated knowledge and did not choose to fear your mm -hmm. There it is again, family. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. When wisdom knows and detects that you fear Yah, she will make herself available to you. Yes. But when she sees no fear of Yah and she sees that you love simplicity and you despise the truth and you despise wisdom, she will steer clear from you. She will stay far away from you. She will not give herself to you. That's right. Isn't that amazing? She will not give herself to you. I turned the volume up. Someone said I should turn it up. So, yeah. yeah. Um, we keep seeing the message that is buffering. Uh, there is absolutely nothing we could do about it, family. Yeah, we can't do nothing about the buffering right now. It's just it's our internet service. We're out in the middle of nowhere, is what some folk would call it. <laughs> so internet service is just kind of it's like that. Okay. So at some point we may have to just pre-record and do a premiere and watch it live with you all. That's something, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, pay attention now. So now it pretty much told you how wisdom feels. This is how wisdom feels. So we can't be to the point where we're not, listen, don't have the fear of Yah. That's why you got to have that fear of Yah first because fe the fear of Yah, what it does is it makes you, let me tell you something, okay? I, I really don't understand why people don't have the fear of Yah. I, I really don't understand it. Let me tell you something. I've made enough mistakes in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't. I didn't see. I didn't had enough happen to me. To let me tell you something. If I were to describe my path, right, I'm walking. I take one step at a time, and I'm <laughs> nervous about taking that step. Yes. So when I go to take that step, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I'm too nervous to stand there though, because I don't know what could be coming. You know, <laughs> and so, but I don't want to go to the left or to the right because I may fall. And so I'm, I'm walking my walk, kind of like. This is how me and my wife walk this walk. You hear me? We walk this walk like, like, okay, okay, is it okay, yeah? Okay, make the next step, okay? And I won't just make it. I put my foot up and test the ground. Okay, it seems solid. Okay, come on, baby. We we make this step, you know? Mm -hmm. and that's how we are. And the scripture says that his word is the light unto our path and the lamp unto that's our That's right. And then he says if we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he will direct our path. So... When you truly fear Yah, you will acknowledge Him in all of your ways, and He will That's make right. that path a lot easier and simpler for you. That's right. And you won't be so willing to rush ahead or rush to the side or to the left or rush back. 
because you are trying to please the Most High Yah. But some people, because of that lack of fear, that lack of trust, and that lack of understanding, they are forging ahead with their steps, with their tongue. People are saying stuff yeah. that is not of Yah, and the Most High will hold that to your charge. Yep. This is why this walk is one of those kinds of walks but where you better know and you better understand yeah, you better. who you are dealing with on every end. The Most High, He is to be feared and revered. Okay? Yep. That's why the fear of Yah is so important and not a lot of people understand it, especially in this awakening. I want to talk about this, what they call an awakening. Okay? It is true there is an awakening happening, but to some degree... Um, much of what we see is not a part of the awakening, is a part of the illusion. Yeah. The awakening, there is something that goes along with that awakening, okay? There's a shaking that comes along with that. So I won't deny that there is an awakening happening, but a lot of people are awakening to the spirits of our ancestors. <laughs> yeah. They're awakening to a Pharisee spirit, a rebellious yeah. spirit, a sottish spirit. Yep. And they are confusing that with the last day's awakening. But what if we were to compare what the Bible said, what the yeah. word of the, the Most High Yah said that the awakening is gonna look like? He told us what it was gonna look like, y'all. Yeah. Did he tell, it, tell us that it was simply the knowledge of self? I think the knowledge of self and who we are and where we came from has been confused with the awakening. Yeah. How many times have we said that our people, thousands of years ago, knew they were Israelites, mm -hmm. but the word said to them at that time that it is high time for you to awake out of your sleep. Now, so, so that knowledge of self didn't mean that they were awake. They knew the Father's name too. They knew all of that, yeah. but they were fast asleep. They were in a slumber. Some was even in the land, land of Israel. <laughs> yeah, they were living in the land, knowing Yah's name and who they were, but they were asleep. Mm -hmm. And so when we compare what the scripture says about the awakening family, we supposed to see some power. Mm -hmm. Now we are seeing the powers of darkness, but it is the power of the Ruach HaKadosh that is going to shake in the last day. And that is what we are waiting to see and witness mm -hmm. on a much larger scale. Yes. Hallelujah. So basically, you know, I think most people, they just get confused about this walk. Let me explain something to you here, right? The problem is you go outside and you see this nice day out. And you're like, wow, this is so nice. You see the sunny days. You go out some, you get really nice cars. You hop in your car. You get to drive here, drive there. You know, you get a free day off work. You get to run and do this, run and do that. And you've got a little money in your pocket. You like, you got a little pep in your step, you know? And you just get this sense of, um... Almost like you're like, just wow, you know, life is kind of beautiful, you know? And you get a sense of all that, right? But the problem is you don't have a real perception of life. Um, according to the scriptures, spiritually, we're at war. Yes. So technically, if you were to, if I were to cause you to blink your eyes closed and you open them back up and you were to see a battlefield, You'd be nervous about going out to Cardia, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> You'd be nervous about driving down the street, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. You'd be nervous about walking across your grass. Why? Because there may be a mine in that grass, right? Mm -hmm. You may get blown up. Enemy may, there may be a sniper out there, right? And the sniper sitting there waiting from a house stop ready to shoot you down, right? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's because we have this, this, this understanding that we're at war here. This is a spiritual warfare that we got going on. Yes. And let me tell you something. The enemy ain't taking prisoners. <laughs> no. He's trying to take you out. He's like, I ain't got no way to put you. I don't want to take you out. I won't put you six feet under. That's really what the enemy want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm talking about the demons and devils. Okay? This is what they want to do. And if they can use people to bring about that will, they will do it. You understand what I'm saying? It's all in your perception. Mm -hmm. It's how you view this walk that we're on. That's why I have a lot of fear mm -hmm. for Yah. Because I know that every step that I take, every step my wife takes, every step my children take is detrimental. And we got to be careful with every move we make. We got to be careful. One thing we have to understand too is, and how many times have we said this over the years on this channel here? 
that the, the battle doesn't stop because you're not aware of it. Right. A lot of times we think, well, if I'm not engaging, if I'm if I just ignore it, if if I don't pay attention to it, if I just do my own thing, if I just forget <laughs> about all of that. If I we we believe that the battle stops if we stop. Yeah. Regardless to whether or not you engage in the battle or not is going to continue without you. Yeah. And you can be affected by the fiery darts. Yeah. The battle will continue. And so if you keep that mindset, like Watchman said, when we go out and about, if we understood, if we could see into the spirit realm, instead of looking at the blue skies and the clouds and the trees and the birds and all of this, if we understood, if we could actually see what was taking place around us constantly, that there's a spiritual war going on, <laughs> then all of the folly that people engage in, they wouldn't even make time for it. They wouldn't even give ear to it. Because they would say, look, this is a spiritual war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> One thing we want you all family to know and understand is how to engage in spiritual warfare because it comes for you whether you want it to or not. Yeah. Let me explain something to you too. You know, when I go out at places, you know, I, I hate to say this, but when people come up to me, I'm looking at them to see if they got a demon. That's the first thing I look at. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is, it, it, is, it is what it is. It is what it is. Somebody come up, I'm buying something from somebody. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking at something. Uh, okay, and they, they come over to me. Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm such and such. And such. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see you. You know? Then I'm looking right at them, see if they got a demon. I'm looking at the attitude. I'm looking at the facial expressions. I'm looking at around them. I'm looking at all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm even looking at the animals, see if the animals get demons in them. I don't want no dog in there running up trying to kill me, right? So I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at everything. I'm looking like, okay, what's going on here? What's going on here? Ain't got nothing to do with fear. It's war. Mm -hmm. Don't you understand? This is warfare. Now, let me explain something to you, right? Pay attention to this, right? Now, it's very important in warfare that you as a soldier, when you go out with your battalion, do you want the battalion, do you want the enemy to know where your battalion is and where you're moving and what you're doing? Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. Do you? Do you? Pay attention. So now, you're, you're planning to go forward and doing this and doing that and to make a strike, right? Right? Now, we're talking about demons in high places and, and, and spirits and wicked spirits and spirits, right? Do you want them to know everything that you're planning on doing and everything you're going to be working on and everything you're up against? You don't, you don't want to blurt out your plans. You get what I'm saying? So when me and my wife, we go through spiritual warfare, we're careful of what we're saying, even around the house, out loud in the air, because you know we have spirits. They are watching you. Remember we did the, uh, a video years ago talking about how spirits are listening to your conversations to see where you are with things, where you are in your mind. You understand what I'm saying? That's why you got to be careful about everything you do. You understand? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 2. The bar, I'm have you read this. Proverbs chapter 2. Start at verse 1. Starting at verse 1. Are we reading the whole thing? Yes. It's a okay. short chapter. Proverbs chapter, the whole chapter. My son, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with you, so that you, you incline your ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yea, if you cry after knowledge, and lift up your voice for understanding if you seek her as silver and search her search for her as for hid treasures then shall you understand the fear of Yahuwah there it is again mm -hmm. and find the knowledge of Elohim for Yahuwah gives wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly he keeps the paths of judgment and guards the way of the sock, socket. What does yours say? Uh, what verse is that? Eight. <clears throat> Preserve it the way of the saints. <laughs> okay, <laughs> chocks it. <laughs> okay, then shall you understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. When wisdom enters into your heart and knowledge is pleasant unto your soul, discretion shall guard you understanding shall keep you to deliver you from the way of the evil man from the man that speaks forward things 
who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they, fr and they froward in their paths, to deliver you from the strange woman, even from the stranger who flatters with her lips, which forsakes the guide of her youth and forgets the covenant of her Elohim. For her house incl inclines unto death, and her paths unto the Raphaim. Death, the dead. <laughs> None that go unto her return again, uh -huh. neither take they hold of the paths of life, that you may walk in the way of good men, and guard the paths of righteousness. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Okay. Now I want you to pay attention to this, right? If you look at verse 12, is it, this is why he wants to give us wisdom, right? It's the key to deliver us from the way of the evil man. See, there's a way of the evil man, and from the man that's speaking forward things. Now, a man that's speaking forward things, what is that? What does that mean? Hmm? That's a man that don't guard his tongue. You hear me? He won't guard his tongue. He just straight out speak forward things, right? Who lead the paths of unrighteousness, who live, who lead the path of unrighteousness to walk in the ways of darkness. Uh, uprightness, I'm sorry. Uprightness is what it says. Who rejoice to do evil and to delight in the forwardness of the wicked whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths to deliver thee from the strange woman, even a stranger to fly with the So he said, this is why you need wisdom. Because if you got wisdom, you're going to know what you're dealing with when you come across these people. Mm. When you come across the, the evil man or the strange woman, because they're going to come at you flattering you, giving you uh, compliments, you know, and all that stuff. And you, you'll be like, they just give you, you give you compliments. It's almost like punching you in your eye. He said, they give you a compliment. You on your way down because they gave you a simple compliment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they flattered you with their lips and you can't even take it, right? Keep it moving, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now, let's go to this one. Now, this is Proverbs chapter 4. Um, uh, Sophia, I'm going to have you read this one. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 through 13. We apologize, family, too. Um, I noticed it, too. An ad popped up right in the middle of the live, and there's a lot of feedback, and I agree. I, I really feel like the enemy is doing because I've seen people doing live broadcasts on all kinds of nonsense. I don't even know why it's and doing that. Maybe it's a setting or something. I got to look on here and see what's going I'm, on. I'm not sure, but it's not just that. It's even the choppiness. Um, yeah. The, it's all, all of what's going on, and I see that um, a lot of people are cutting in and out. Um, it's, it's buffering really badly, but you can definitely watch it back on the replay. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. that so. But we'll continue on. Yes. Okay, Sophia, go ahead. Children, listen to the discipline of a father and give attention to no understanding. For I gave you good instruction, do not forsake my Torah. For I was fa my father's son, tender, and the only one in the eyes of my mother. Then he taught me and said to me, Let your heart hold fast my words, guard my commands and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not leave her and let her guard you. Love her and let her watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is... Get wow. wisdom, and with all your getting, get understanding. Exalt her and let her uplift you. She brings you esteem when you embrace her. She gives you, she gives your head a wreath of esteem. She shields you with an adorning crown. Hear my son, and accept my words, and let the years of your life be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in straight paths. When you walk, your steps shall not be hindered. And if you run, you shall not stumble. Hold fast to discipline. Do not let go. Watch over her, for she is your high. 
Wow. Uh, read the next verse, two, four, 14. And do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evildoers. Okay. So basically, it's telling you again. I like this part here when he says, um, it says, Exalt her, and she will promote thee. She will bring thee to honor when thou doest embrace her. She shall give thee thine head of an or uh, head, give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Wow. Do you hear all of this? It's saying what wisdom will do. It says forsake her not and she will preserve thee. Love her and she will keep thee. Wow. Wow. So your perseverance is in what? Hmm? Wisdom. Wisdom. So it's better to seek after wisdom, family. Yes. Uh, instead of just knowledge. A lot of people are have become so religious, they seek after knowledge and they think that they're gaining wisdom through reading and studying and all of this stuff. But they have these spirits on them that wisdom don't want to have nothing to do with. When wisdom detects those spirits, those evil spirits, those foul spirits, those prideful spirits, those wicked spirits, those simple spirits, those sottish spirits, wisdom don't want to deal with that. Wisdom nope. will come to those who humble themselves, who seek after the truth, who That's seek right. after Yah, who have a certain spirit dwelling in them already. Wisdom will gladly come in and preserve you and keep you and yes. teach you and elevate you. These are the things that wisdom will yes. do. But when you are one of those who are simply seeking after knowledge, yes. reading all that you can, I'm not saying not to read family, but some people think that this is the wisdom. <laughs> okay, I read this, I read this. And with all of that reading, the scripture told you, it says, and all you're getting and all you're reading, get understanding. Yes. It tells you, and all thy getting, get understanding. And then it also tells us to don't lean to your own understanding. That's and so right. the, the scripture is definitely trying to show and make a difference in those who are gaining knowledge and those who are reading and studying and all of that. Because it does tell you to study to show yourself approved. But guess what? If you really truly study to show yourself approved, in your studying, you will come across the words or the instructions of wisdom as she tells you, if you want me, this is what you do. That's what you'll get in your studying. That's right. And your understanding. Okay, wisdom says that I can't be this haughty person. I can't be this prideful, boastful person. I can't be this That's right. lifted up, high and mighty person. If I want wisdom, then I've got to humble myself. Wow. That's so right. in all thy getting, get understanding. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. now, I want you to think about what I'm about to say to you, right? <laughs> so I'm about to throw a curveball at you, okay? Now, imagine this, right? Yah says, and, and this one I'm going to direct to you brothers out there. All you brothers out there, I want you to pay attention, right? So Yah says, you know what I'm going to do to you, brother? Right now, you know what I'm going to do? Now, Yah's talking to you. You, right there. I'm pointing at you, okay? Yah's talking to you. Yah says, you know what, brother? I'm going to give you so much strength till you're going to be the strongest man on the planet. And then he looks at you and says, strength ain't enough, though. I'm going to bless you with wisdom, too, so that you're going to be the wisest man on the planet. Right? But I got to warn you. The one dangerous thing that can destroy your strength, take away your strength, and destroy your wisdom is a strange woman. Mm, mm, mm. That's the word. That's the word. Wasn't it a strange woman that took Solomon down? Yes. Huh? Or should I say Solomon took hold of many strange women? Wasn't it a strange woman that took Samson down? Yes. Samson and Solomon, all his strength, he couldn't deal with a strange woman. Mm -hmm. Solomon, all this, all this wisdom. This is Solomon saying this. Read, wait, 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 watch this. This is Solomon talking here, right? He's talking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> from experience. So watch this, right? This is, this is Proverbs chapter 5. I'm going to read this. Watch this. This is what it says. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thy ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a as a honeycomb. Hmm. 
<laughs> her lips is like a honeycomb, huh, Sam? Solomon? Okay. Her mouth is smoother than oil. <laughs> <laughs> you see it, right? It's, I've been telling you what these strange women are like, right? He says, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Mm, mm, mm. Right in the word. Wisdom is telling you, if you go back right through Psalms, how many times does wisdom say in the scriptures that I'm here to keep thee from the strange woman? Mm -hmm. The woman that flattered with her lips. It ain't just in chapter 4, it's in chapter 5, it's in chapter 6, it's in chapter 7. But he's literally saying the same, well, wisdom is saying the same exact thing to keep thee from what? The woman that flattered with her lips, the strange woman. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, um, Ultimate says that the Most High says, if any man desires wisdom, let him ask. Okay. Yeah. I, wanna, I want you to understand what's being said there because anyone can desire it and say, yeah, can I have wisdom? That doesn't mean that the Most High is going to say, oh, since you ask, grant it. Right, exactly. <laughs> there are things we have to understand. And all by getting, get understanding. You ain't got fear. You, ain't wisdom. you, ain't, you can ask all you want. Right. You ain't getting no wisdom. That's there right. are some things that you will not obtain. Uh, now, get this. The, the Most High yes. is saying, look, if you ask, it shall be given. Knock on the door, shall be open. Seek and you shall find. But we have to understand that there are requirements to those. That's right. We have to understand that. Because, <clears throat> excuse me. Because you have people believing that, well, I ask, so that means I have it. I ask for wisdom, so I must be wise. That ain't, that's not how that's it not works. How it works yeah. There is a there is a price to that wisdom. Meaning, you're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to fear Yah. All of that other stuff yep. has to be absent. That's so right. basically, you're asking. Um, if you are truly sincere, the Most High will say, "Okay, this person asks for wisdom." So, in order to get them to it, if wisdom is going to be granted to them, mm -hmm. then they're going to have to go. Notice anything you ask Yah for. If you are sincere in wanting that thing from Yah, if you are not at the place to receive it, guess what? He's going to have to take you through the things that are required <laughs> to get you to it. That's right. <laughs> That's how it works. So, if you ask the Most High for a greater understanding of spiritual warfare. He's not going to say, voila, grant it. Mm -hmm. it, that, it doesn't work like that. He's going to say, like oh, it. you want a greater understanding of spiritual warfare? I'm going to take you through some stuff. Yeah, go through some you got to be proved. <laughs> I'm going to have to prove you that this is what you truly want. He got to take you through some battles. You want you to be smart in warfare? He's going to take you through some battles. That's the only way you're going to get smart. Yeah. <laughs> and so even with that wisdom, um, if you're a person who's asking for wisdom, but you're filled with pride, what is he going to do? Yeah. He's going to humble you. He's going to humble you, yep. He's going to bring you low. Yeah, in other words, I, I want wisdom. He said, but you got pride there. I resist the proud. Yeah. So I got to do something to humble you then because I resist the proud. So I got to humble you. Wow. Right. <laughs> Woo! Right. <laughs> and if you are a simple-minded person, yeah. Listen. wisdom don't come to simple-minded mm -hmm. people. He's going to take you through some things that's going to uh, sharpen your... Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. This is a testimony from many years ago. There was a young man who used to follow my channel. Uh, this is back when it was called Black Education TV. And this young man, um, he said, Sister Deborah, I love listening to your channel, but you seem like you're a little bit racist. You know, you're always talking about get against interracial marriage and dating and all this kind of stuff. And... He said, I just, I just feel like, you know, you harp on that stuff too much, right? And I'm going to make it short. Mm -hmm. But this young man, he continued to watch. He continued to watch. He continued to watch. And then he said, my words came true one day. He was dating a, a white girl. And this is a young man who was raised by his two older sisters because his parents died when he was young. And he said, my two sisters are the sweetest, kindest, most gentle women Listen. you could ever meet. And they were good to me. They raised me. They took good care of me in the absence of my parents. But my white Gentile girlfriend could not stand my sister. She hated them. And he said, it was at that, that moment, he said, I realized what you were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, Sister Deborah. Because I couldn't get what, how could you hate these two women? They are some extraordinary black women. You have no reason to hate them. And then it, it under, he understood it. So, because at first he was simple minded, it is what it is, family, 
he went with a strange woman, so it couldn't have been any character issues that drew him there for her to have hatred toward two beautiful daughters of Zion who are righteous. It couldn't have been character issues. It was something else inside of her that made it to where she couldn't stand them, but she liked him. Mm -hmm. And so this man began to understand my words when he saw how this woman responded to his sisters. Wow. And that's something. Yes. That's something, see? This is, and we see it in the scriptures. I mean, just reading these chapters dealing with wisdom is enough that, that should make a person say, okay, it's something mm -hmm. to this. Something to it. Something to it. Now, wisdom. I'm going to prove to you now that wis you just can't ask for wisdom and the wisdom just going to just fall on you like that. Right. You have to be a certain way. Okay. Yes. That's because we look at scripture and ask and it shall be given. The scripture also says that you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss. You ask amiss. That you may consume it upon your lust. That's what it said. So sometimes <laughs> you sit there, you, you can ask all you want, but if you ain't right like you're supposed to be, when you ask for these things, you might not get it. Mm -hmm. You know, it cries out to the simple ones. How come it don't just uh, fall on the simple ones? I know some of the simple ones want wisdom. Mm -hmm. But because the simple ones are acting a certain way. Yes. Now, I'm going to prove to you. Let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 8. Now, it's going to get juicy. Proverbs chapter 8. And we're going to break this up. All of us are going to read a little of this one because it's a little longer. We're going to start with you, Rebecca. Rebecca, read 1 through 11. And make sure you speak uh, loud enough in the mic. Does not wisdom call and understanding lift her up lift up her voice? On the top of the heights along the way, between the paths she hath taken her stand. Beside the gates leading to the city, at the entrances she shout, O men, I call to you, and my voice is to the sons of men. You simple ones, understand insight, and you fools, be of an understanding heart. Listen, for I speak noble words, and the opening of my lips is about straightness. For my mouth speaks truth, and wit wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, none of them twisted or crooked. All of them plain to him who, who understands and straight to those who find knowledge. Accept my discipline, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all delights are not comparable to her. Okay, now I want you to pay attention to this, right? When I first read this, and I did a, did a very deep study in wisdom and understanding some 20 plus years ago, okay? I was so blessed by understanding wisdom and how wisdom works I have received revelations on it and I was so baracked by it until I named my daughter after wisdom and understanding the wisdom the, the um, Greek word for wisdom is Sophia and Sinesis is for understanding that's how much I was into this before my daughter was even born, I, before I even got married, you hear me? Before I even got married. Before you even knew me. Yeah, before I even knew my wife, yeah. I already said, one of my children, one of my daughters, I'm going to name Sophia Sinesis because I was that much in tune with the revelation that y'all have shown me, okay? Now, I want you to understand something here. It says, she puts forth her voice. She. Mm -hmm. It says, call understanding thy kinswoman right and that's in verse that's actually in chapter 7 where it actually says that uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to just go there real quickly and just read this one verse mm -hmm. chapter 7 verse 4 it says say unto wisdom thou art my sister and call understanding thy kinswoman that they may keep thee from the strange woman that flattereth with their lips right the stranger that flattereth with their lips now pay attention do you understand what that's like saying? Now imagine a young man, right? Mm -hmm. Now, take take my son, for instance, right? Now let's say my son was younger than my other two sisters, my other two daughters, or, or younger than, than my, my three daughters, my oldest three daughters, right? He was younger, right? Then there was a young lady he was considering, right? Well, my 
two dog, like his two sisters are going to look at him like this here. They're going to look at her up and down and look at her spirit, look at her eyes, look at her mind. <laughs> That's why I said call understanding wisdom like your sister. Because if your sisters, if they see you mess, they're going to be like, whoa, 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 come here. Come here. Come here, little brother. Come here. We see something going on with this young lady. She's not good for you. They, they'll say that in a minute. I even believe younger sisters. <laughs> yeah, even younger ones. We're speaking yeah. about our oldest son, yeah. Elijah. If, even if his younger sisters um, yeah. said, um, I don't think that this young lady is appropriate, okay? She's got purple hair and uh, black fingernails and black lipstick. And, <laughs> and I'm just using extreme things, exactly. right? Exactly. Because mm -hmm. it it, I mean, she could be dressed like... Uh, like uh, the perfect person. But if wisdom and understanding can see through the revealing of the spirit or the right. ruach that there is something there that shouldn't be, uh, they should be able to go to their brother and say that there is something off with this young lady. You need to reconsider. There is right. a spirit that I sense that is not of Yah. There is an unrighteous spirit and he should be able to give ear to the wisdom of his sisters, whether they're younger or older. That's right. Mm -hmm. So basically what I'm trying to say is the scripture is telling you because you might not have sisters, right? Mm -hmm. It's saying, but you do. Yes. Their name is Sophia Sinesis. <laughs> <laughs> Wisdom is your sister and understanding is your kinswoman. He said, these two are, you treat them like they're your sisters that you need to listen to. Now, I don't know. I don't know. Some people might not want to listen to the words of their sister, right? Your sister may be trying to tell you something, but you should always give heed to someone that's in your family that's close to you that's trying to tell you something. Yes. That, especially that you could be making a bad mistake. Mm -hmm. Listen. You might not like it, but listen is what we're saying, right? So in other words, you're supposed to treat wisdom and understanding like they are literal. Mm -hmm. Sister and a kinswoman. Mm -hmm. Literally. Wow. Absolutely. You see that? <laughs> and so when you see, go back to chapter 8 here, and you see this, she says, I call, and my and my voice is to the sons of man. Oh, ye simple, understand wisdom. Oh, ye fools, be of an understanding heart. For I got so much um, excellent and wonderful things to speak to you. I don't have nothing perverse. To say to you, I don't have no abomination, ain't nothing wicked or uh, abomination even in my lips. Mm -hmm. I have wonderful things to tell you that's going to help you in your life, right? But we refuse that wisdom. Mm -hmm. If that's something, we refuse it. Uh, go ahead, um, the next one. Who, who, who read the first one? Was that you? Okay, Rebecca, Sophia, you read 12 through 21. I, wisdom, have dwelt with insight, and I find knowledge, foresight. The reverence of Yahuwah is to hate evil, and I hated pride and arrogance and the evil way, and the perverse mouth. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding, mightiness is mine. By me sovereigns reign, and rulers make righteous decrees. By me princes rule, and nobles all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who earnestly seek me find me. Riches and esteem are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, and fine gold. And my increase is choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of right ruling, to bestow substance on those who love me and to fill their treasures. Okay. So basically, it's, it's the same thing, pretty much. It's like what I'm saying. I'm, it says here, the fear of Yahuwah is to hate evil. What evil is it talking about? Pride and arrogance. You see that? Pride and arrogance and, and, and the evil way. And the forward mouth. Do I hate? Mm -hmm. Wow. Do who hate? Wisdom. Wisdom says, I hate these things. So wait a minute. If you're proud, there you go again. If you're proud, arrogant, you have an evil way about you, and you got a forward mouth, 
Wisdom hates you. You can't. You can't expect wisdom will run from you. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? It will keep away from you if you got these attributes. It will keep away from you. And I don't care how many scriptures you know. I don't care if you know it in Hebrew, in Greek, or whatever language you know these scriptures. It don't matter if you're any of these things. Wisdom gonna keep far away from you. You may know those words in the scriptures. But you will have no wisdom as it relates to it. Yeah, the spirit of wisdom will not dwell there. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. It will keep far away from you. But notice it says this here. By me, the princes rules, the nobles, even the judges of the earth. Wow. Wait a minute. What's going on here then? Understand something else. People don't understand what's mm -hmm. going on in the world, right? I'm going to say this. I want you to think about what I'm about to tell you here. Because you need to understand everything. Mm-hmm. There ain't a person that can sit on the throne anywhere on this planet except Yah allows them. Mm -hmm. So, um, Donald Trump. Donald Trump is there because Yah allowed him. Not because Donald Trump was righteous. That wisdom says, I need a very wise man to sit on the throne. No. Hallelujah. Sometimes Yah is doing some things. Yes. Sometimes he's trying to reveal some things. Sometimes there's some things he's trying to bring about the end of the days, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he needs some wicked men in office to bring, bring about judgment, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> he needs some wicked men in office that's going to do some evil. Yeah. Right? Understand that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you touched on this because a lot of times our people just don't get it. We, we just don't get it. We have to understand when we see awful things, this is why when I see people say, if there was a God in heaven, why is he allowing all these horrible things to happen why is this happening why is that happening you have to understand that the most high once he sets a decree once his word goes out of his mouth yes it shall not return void yes and if he told us that in the last days perilous times shall come what makes you think that there's going to be a righteous man <laughs> sitting up in the White House? Yeah. Now these evangelicals, they got it all wrong. Yeah, they got it so wrong. I would be, funny. I would be completely on their side if they brought perspective to things. Yeah. They are out here saying, "Oh, let's lay hands on the president and pray for him because he was chosen by God." They're doing it like that. Ooh. Talking about, "Oh, he's a righteous man." Don't try to flip the script because he's there. Yes, he is there because Yah put him there. Yeah. Because there's nobody sitting anywhere in a high position that Yah is not aware of. He is there. But that is to manifest Yah's power in the earth yes. in his word where he stated that perilous times are going to come and evil men shall wax worse and worse. Yeah. So when you evangelicals try to say that this is a righteous man because he's sitting in the office, mm -hmm. then that shows that you don't understand the God you claim to serve. Yes. Because... The Elohim that we serve, he said that it's going to be wicked rulers throughout the land. And they were appointed by him, yeah. even though yeah. people voted him in and people agree with him and all of this other stuff. These wicked men were appointed by Yah so that he can bring about all of the destructions and the, the um, strong delusions yes. that were spoken of in scripture. That's yes. the difference. All of the strong delusions. There's a lot of strong delusions out here. And Christianity ain't the only one, family. Yes. That ain't the only one. So many strong delusions to where you have delusional people trying to delude others with their deceptions and being deceived themselves. That's right. Exactly. Isn't that something? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this whole thing, y'all, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I look at it all. You know, I, I mean... I mean, like I said before, the devil is Yah's devil. Yeah, that's Yah's devil. <laughs> yeah, that's his little devil. You know, I need my, I need a devil. I bet when he was creating everything, he probably thought to said, "This ain't gonna work. I can't reveal my judgments or anything until I need, I need somebody wicked. I need some opposition. I need an opposition. I need a very wicked opposition. Someone so wicked. Oh, I need to create a devil." Now, let me clarify something real quick. Years ago when Watchmen first said this, somebody else said, did he just say that uh, Satan is God's Satan? Yes, he is. So <laughs> understand where we're coming from. There is not anything created that wasn't created by the foreknowledge of the Mosiah, right. including Satan. Yeah. Satan didn't create himself. He didn't come of his own. Yeah, that's right. The scripture says that the High created evil, even the wicked. For the day of evil. He created all of it. 
<laughs> by his spoken word. The spoken word. And you know what's funny? <laughs> People don't understand. Uh, let me let me say something to you, right? Think about this, right? Um, the minute Yah created Lucifer, because we know he wasn't called Satan at first, right? But we know the minute Yah created Lucifer, the minute Lucifer had breath and his eyes open up, Yah sat there and said, okay, yeah, yeah, he's the one that's going to betray me. He's the one that's going to gonna cause half of heaven to leave, uh, one-fourth of heaven to leave, one-third, shall I say, and, and he's the one that's going to have all this opposition against me and all this, but that's good. That's why I need him to be here, okay? He could have said, you know what, if he's going to do all that, ah, I'm not going to create him. Let me create somebody else. <laughs> he didn't do that, right? Hmm. He, he proceeded to create him as he was creating him and saw what he was going to turn out to be. Yes. He knew every path of it. Let me tell you something. The minute y'all created that apple seed back in Genesis, he knew every place on the planet where an apple tree would grow and every place on the planet where a seed would fall. Yes. From the beginning of time till now yes. to the future. Yes. <laughs> he <laughs> know it all. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> y'all is awesome. That's what I say. He's awesome. Now, watch this. Go back to here, and Deborah, I'm going to have you read the next passage, which is verse 22 through 20 through 31. Okay. Yahuwah possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. Then there was no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. Listen. Wisdom said they were, she was there. Hallelujah. <laughs> when he set a compass upon the face of of the depth when he established the clouds above when he strengthened the mountains of the deep when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth then I was by him as one brought up with him then I was I'm sorry I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him Rejoicing in the habitable part of the earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Wow. Hallelujah. And that's something. It got to be some setting. I'm going to have to figure that out about that commercial thing. It's just really in, in, in well, intrusive. Well, from what everyone's saying, it keeps going in and out. It keeps stopping and restarting. Oh. And it's buffering a lot. So. That's because the internet. It did, it did stop one time. We will definitely have to just re-upload this, family, because it's being recorded two ways. Because yeah. there is a lot of interference on this message. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, basically in this passage, what I understand here is this. It's so deep because it, he's letting you know, wisdom is saying, I was there. When he created the earth and, and the things in it and all of these, the fields of the earth and all this, I was there. <laughs> I was there. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. So listen to this. Woo. So that brings a whole new meaning, family. Listen. The scripture says, let us wow. make man in <laughs> our image. There it is. Let us make man in our you image. You see who he was talking to. And then it, then it says, male and female created he them. Now, I remember before we talked about this years ago, some of you all couldn't handle that because your Christian pastor told you that you, that the Messiah was talking to Jesus. Okay. That's what some of y'all said. Some of them said angels. And some of them said angels. Yep. But when you hear wisdom speaking, she said, I was there when he was creating all of this. She said, I was there before the earth or the world yeah. was even formed. She said, right. I was there. She. She said, I was there. <laughs> and so, again, when it says, let us make man in our image, male and female created he them. Yes. Absolutely. It should make a lot more sense yes. to our family. That's right. That's right. It should make a lot more sense when you think about that. So I think this is just awesome seeing this. Seeing that um, it says rejoicing in the inhabitable part of the earth. My delights were with the sons of men. 
And so it's like the wisdom is like, man, I wanted to, I want to bless these uh, uh, my people to be wise. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to be wise, but we, as a people, just seem to be Not drawn to wisdom. foolishness. Let me explain something to you. What I mean by desire and foolishness. Okay, watch this, right? Um, just to give you an example, of something, right? I've seen people put up videos that dealing with all type of black, um, what you call it, um, chaotic, um, um, what they call it, uh, world two, what that, what's that? World star. World star. <laughs> mm -hmm. All that kind of foolishness, right? And you'll see the millions of views these videos will get, right? Mm -hmm. But put up a video about farming or about growing your own food <laughs> or about becoming self-sufficient and all of that and watch the views. Be oh, we're that. not interested in that. It's this is boring. Oh, wait, but this guy, we're beating this lady down. Oh, man, oh, let's man, check this out. We'll share it. <laughs> but the truth. Yeah, you see that? But the truth just don't get views like that. It's just we, we, we are people that are drawn to calamity. Yeah. Huh? We are we are drawn to calamity. And foolishness. And foolishness. All this chaotic, crazy stuff. We're drawn to that stuff, right? And Wisdom is sitting there probably like saying... I'm, I'm standing here and waiting on you. I, I, I can see wisdom just doing this here. Can you imagine, right, a person, a woman, standing in the middle of a room with about 100 brothers and sisters, okay? I'm going to say it something else. I had to, mm -hmm. to catch myself, okay? 100 brothers and sisters just sitting in the room, and wisdom just come in her room. She's just sitting in the middle of the room. She got these baskets full of gold and silver and Precious stones and all, and she's like, "Hey, you want some of these?" Like, no, no. What you got in that bag? Oh, no, no, you keep it. You keep it. I don't need that. And she's like, she's like, oh, "Wait a minute. Oh, here you go, sister. I got some." She's like, mm, "Where you get that from?" You know. And what's, what's the problem? What's the problem? Looking around like, 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 man. It kind of reminds eventually me. Eventually, she just walk on. She's like, "I guess nobody want me." Imagine a flea market, and <laughs> wisdom has a booth. Yeah. Okay, and she got all these goods, but she see a thousand people lined up over here uh, to get uh, some World Star Hip Hop videos. Yeah. Somebody selling the, the latest clips or whatever. Or, Somebody, the or the latest Beyonce CD and all of this old stuff, right? Or the latest, um, uh, what's the hot clothes they wear, whatever the clothes, the fashions, all of these clothes that make us look like clowns out here in the street, right? Everybody line up to buy the bling bling and the clothes and the hats and the caps and yep. the fine mm -hmm. shoes. Look at the Air Jordans, $300. But Wisdom is saying, look, I got something free. I'm giving it away free. free. Big sign in the back, free. Free. Wisdom, I want to give it to you. All I need to do is just talk to you. Come and let me talk to you. I just want to whisper something in your ear. I want to give you something that you can live with for the rest of your life. But she might only have one person standing there in line to receive what she has to give because There's everybody a, is yeah. lined up everywhere else in this flea market to buy all of the foolishness and the nonsense. And it's probably a very humble person that everybody that all those people look down on. It's probably a very humble per person come over there so humble. She said, yes, um, I, I like to take what you got in that bag. And I was like, you do? Well, come on here. I ain't just got that. Come here. Come a little closer. Let me talk to you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. <laughs> How would you like not, not like to have to work that job all your life? This person be like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can show you a way. I can show you a way that you can do this here. You can be self-sufficient. How would you like to know this here? Guess what? I know where their hidden riches are. <laughs> what is I'm going to do all of that? She'll show you where hidden riches is. You wouldn't even know that it's there. And you'll look and you'll be like, wow, look at here. i never forget the day when we um had brought a house years ago. This is a house we brought in, 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 uh, in, in uh, um, uh, Michigan years ago and in the attic of this house was I looked up in the attic I saw all this stuff up in the attic you know I said I wonder what all this stuff is you know go up in the attic and I saw a can just a, a you know a coffee can about this big you know how the big coffee cans are mm -hmm. and a towel stuffed in it right so I was like I wonder what's in that can so I'm just grabbing stuff in there looking through there and so I'm saying look at that can man <laughs> so I looked the can up it was full of silver dollars filled to the top Filled to the top, silver dollars. 
And it was all kinds of other stuff, too. I mean, old ones, too. <laughs> all kinds of other things, um, old antique tables and yes. um, a bag of mail back from the, what, the t 20s or 30s? And, yeah. I mean, we ended up selling a lot. That bag of mail we sold on eBay. We, yeah. we were like, ah, we ain't got no use for it. We weren't going to throw it away. We knew it was worth something. Yeah. So we showed some of the pieces. I mean, all of this stuff hit in this house. Another house, we found a, a big leather purse filled with change just coins mm -hmm. just so heavy you're like what is in this purse he was filled with money <laughs> <laughs> and so i mean y'all was throwing it was all kinds of just just incredibly hidden things one time we went up in the attic and we had all these shutters that we sold and we saw these shots so i wonder if anybody want these things you know and we so we got so much off those shutters it was ridiculous the amount of money we got off these these all these shutters a lot of it was probably about fifty shutters was it a close to I don't it? remember how many it was just a lot yeah <laughs> and we didn't need them but the point we're trying to make is that like uh, Watchman said wisdom will show you hidden things hidden things things that you are not just going to read about things that you're not just going to hear about but things that will be revealed to you yes you see exactly. But that's why you got to listen to wisdom. Because wisdom will tell you to you. You don't know what you got there, do you? You don't understand what that is, do you? you know, I'm going to show you something here. Come here, I'm going to show you this, show you this, show you that. We're all, it's always like that. You'll be sitting there, you scratch your head like, wow, I had no idea, mm. you know, that this was this and that was that. And this, I'm telling you, it's incredible. Just let wisdom guide you and be humble. You got to be humble. You got to get rid of that pride. You got to get rid of that arrogancy. Get rid of all that stuff. Humble yourself down, way down to the ground. Humble yourself. <laughs> There's some some even more important things that wisdom yeah. will reveal to you in your life. Um, wisdom will tell you things about people. Just say you're about to marry someone and they said all the, the right words and did all the right things. But wisdom will nudge you and say, you didn't know about this. Maybe you should ask about that. Yes. Every aspect of your life, wisdom will be your guide if you will allow her and if you qualify for her guidance. Yes. You see, she will guide you even in what to eat. Yes. What to say, what yes. jobs to take, where to move. Yes, exactly. She'll guide you in everything. Everything. Wow. I'm telling you, it's it's that's why I say we we my wife we get to the point we take these steps we take a, we like a baby fresh just starting to walk sometimes it's like before we make a step we like okay you gotta be careful gotta make sure you with me yeah where you at looking back like okay okay you got me okay <laughs> you kind of gotta be like that in this battle because like I said it's mines it's traps it's all kinds of stuff out here in the world you can't see it. And one thing, but he wanna, can. <laughs> one thing I want us, the people to understand too, we were talking about uh, Joseph yesterday. Oh yeah, listen to this. We have to understand that some things that come in your life, you'll, you'll think that the Most High has made a mistake. You'll say, well, why did he allow this to happen in my life? Yes. You have to understand something. He says, the steps of the righteous are ordered by Yah. Though we may fall, we will not be utterly cast down. And then we have to understand also that um, he allows certain things to take place, good or bad. That's why it says, in everything, give yes. thanks. Sometimes those bad things have to happen in order for us to get to the place that he's trying to get us to. If Joseph, y'all know the story. Yeah, listen. If Joseph didn't have, um, I'm going to say he was a bit lifted up in pride. He was, okay? If he didn't have all of that, the brothers wouldn't, wouldn't have gotten angry at him. Yeah. And they wouldn't have been so angry to, to where they sold him. Yeah, he's a little arrogant. Uh, yeah. 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 It humbled him too. Yeah. yeah. And then after they sold him, um, one uh, thing led to another. He ended up in prison because of Potiphar's wife. And then because of that incident, in prison, he was able to give some instruction to the Pharaoh because of a famine that was coming. Mm -hmm. You see how everything la lined yeah. up? The whole story lines up to where this thing had to happen in order to get him to this point. And it was a bad thing. He was he was um, thrown out there by his brothers who actually contemplated killing him. Yeah. Okay. So his actions stirred up spirits in them. Yeah. Okay. Those spirits that were stirred up in them made them do this heinous thing to him, which led him to this place, which led him to this place, which led him to yeah. be a second in command next to the Pharaoh. But all things work together for not just his good, yeah. but for our good too. Wow. Because if all of our people died in that famine mm -hmm. and it was only Joseph left, 
then Judah wouldn't be in America. So the, the rabbit. Wow. You hear this? Now watch this. Watch this. Pay attention. So now watch <laughs> this. Pay attention. So what and if Joseph, right, had been sold into slavery and admitted his brothers threw him to the way? Watch this. What if when they threw Joseph down in the hole, Joseph just started cursing and going mad. Ah, you got no, 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 just cussing up a storm, right? All angry, right? And then the, then the um, um, uh, Israelites, I think it was Israelites, they came and grabbed him and took him and sold him into slavery. It was something like that. I'm not sure, but I have to look at look over that. But they sold him into slavery. And then what if, if when they were selling him into slavery and he's looking at his brothers, he's cussing at his brothers, going all off, right? Then they get him over into slavery and he's become a slave. He's getting mad, just cursing the circumstances and everything, right? Not knowing that Yah was behind it all. Yeah. Then here he is living righteous. He's so in Potiphar's house, and he's like, "Man, this ain't so bad. I'm like the head. Of the, I'm, I'm like the guy got me the head over his servants in his house, and I'm doing this. I got a little freedom here. I'm, I'm doing all this nice stuff for Potiphar, and Potiphar is nice toward me. He's good toward me, and all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is nice. All of a sudden, his wife goes and tempts him, and he runs away from her. Right. Next thing you know, he's in jail. Imagine if he started cursing the situation he was in then. Mm -hmm. Hot dog it. <laughs> I can't believe y'all have put me in jail. Oh, as good as I were to Potiphar, as good as I was to all these people, and I can't believe it. Getting all angry, right? What do that tell you? Mm hmm Wow. And everything gives thanks. Yah was the one that caused it all. Had he acted like that, he could have been cursing Yah. Exactly. Wow. Now, what if he was so in the flesh? Wow, listen. What if he was such a carnal man yeah. that when he saw his brothers come and say, the famine is doing this to us, our father is sick, we have no food, blah, blah, blah. What if he looked at them and he held a grudge? Yeah. And he said, hmm, I know I can help them, but I'm not helping them Negroes. I help my father, but forget them. Or what if he just said, forget all of them? Because in order to help his father, he would have had to make it known who he was. Yeah. What if he just said, forget all of them? Yeah, and that's something. And just let all of the other tribes of Israel die in the drought and the famine. You would not exist today. Wow. Shimuel. So, so watch Shimuel. this. Yeah. Sophia. <laughs> Sophia. You would not exist today. Isn't that something? None of you would exist today. We wouldn't exist today if Joseph was selfish and held that grudge. Well, guess what? Joseph had insight, though. Right. He had <laughs> insight. He looked at his whole life, and he knew that all things worked together for his good. Therefore, he could conclude and say what? He said, y'all meant it for evil, but y'all meant all this evil that came upon me for, for good. good. Wow. It worked together for your good. Yes. Hallelujah. So then, we got to change the way we look at life, right? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> we got to change the way we look at it, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what you don't like, no matter what's going wrong, no matter how you feel, you got to constantly say, it's for my good. It's for my good. It's for my good. It's working for my good. God, y'all got something good going to come out of this thing. I always say that when I'm going through something. Okay, okay, I'm going through this. It, it must have a blessing on the other end. Yes. It must be something beautiful waiting for me. And it always is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> It always is, right? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all know what he's doing, family. Yeah, he know what he's he doing. He knows what he's doing. Yes, I he mean, does. Even, even when his brothers rose up against him, y'all knew what he was doing. Yeah. At the time, they didn't understand. They may not even, it didn't even cross their mind that they were being evil and wicked and low down. But y'all needed them to be evil and wicked yes. and low down in order for them to carry out what they were going to carry out so yes. that y'all can carry out what he was going to carry out in the future. Yes. So even in today's time, when you have enemies rise up against you, yes. you have to understand that all things work together for your good when you are called according to Yah's purpose. So those enemies, you ain't got yes. to fear them. You don't have to fret them because Yah is going to work it for your good. Yeah. Every situation. Now, now watch this, right? You know that when Yah killed the firstborn in Egypt, when and the children of Israel was in Egypt, you know that Pharaoh was literally defeated then. He was completely defeated. He was so humbled and defeated until Pharaoh said, okay, okay, take, take, take these people out of here. People, take these Get servants, these slaves, take them out of here and take whatever spoils you made. Just get it all out of here. Just take it all, right? He was already defeated. So then why was a need for there for him to even rise up again? 
Because y'all need it. Y'all say, it ain't enough, Pharaoh, that you humbled yourself enough to let my people go. That ain't enough. I need to destroy you now. In order to destroy you, I gotta stir you I up. I gotta harden your heart and stir you up mm -hmm. so that you come after them now. Wow. Yeah. So y'all will even <laughs> allow that. I thank y'all for his. his Poor Pharaoh, he never had a chance. <laughs> he, he, he never had a chance. Yes. I thank y'all for the wisdom of his people, those who know and understand these things. Those who know and understand how Yah works and how he moves and how even in that is because Yah wanted wanted to destroy Pharaoh, he had to stir him up, right? Yeah. So sometimes even mm -hmm. in our own lives, Yah want to do something. He wants to move. He wants to act. Yeah. And so he might have to stir an enemy up against you so that he can show forth his power, his power. in an instant. Wow. And we don't always understand that, but I thank Yah for the understanding in those things and for those who confirm that understanding in these things, that Yah sometimes have to stir people up. Um, you might have a person on your job. I've heard testimonies where people are going through things on their job and they'll have um, an enemy that looks just like them, stirred up against them. Yes. And the Most High wants to move in that instant, so he'll allow that stirring. And you might say, well, man, I lost my job, though. But then you look up, and then you have a better job. But if that enemy didn't get stirred up against you, you would still be sitting in this position, not making as much as you're making over here. You, you know, it's amazing. That is so true. I haven't gave this testimony before, but I'm telling you, I remember years ago when I was working at Sears, and I had this woman that was over me. I was a stock person. And the lady was over me. I'm telling you, I was, in my mind, she the most racist old white woman, the meanest old racist white woman I ever seen, ever had to work with in my lifetime. This woman was like Scrooge in the flesh. <laughs> you hear me? Humbug. That's how she was. She was just like that. Uh, just always just, uh, Eric, come over here. You forgot to say, Eric, Eric, this, I mean, she was just, it was horrible. <laughs> it got to the point, I, I went to my boss. I said, can you, can you, this, she's always on me, just the way she just deals with me. He was like, he said, like, well, you know, uh, um, she's a good worker and everything. And, and, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. I said, what do you mean? She's so rude. And he's like, ain't nothing I can do, you know? And I felt like, oh, man, this woman. But it was the same woman that when I was trying to get a raise, the bosses went to her and said, yeah, this young man, he want to he wanna advance up into um, sales. And the sales were making a lot of money, these salesmen. They're like, uh, but he's a young fella and. We just want to get your opinion on whether we should hire him or not. This same lady looked at him and said, oh, he's the best worker in Sears here. He says, you can't find a better worker to promote. <laughs> I, and when I heard she said that, I was just totally floored by it. I said, wow, she was on me like the devil himself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's through her I got the promotion. Mm, mm, figure that out. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? All things work together for your good. Yes, hallelujah. There it is. Let me read this last passage here. Okay, this is 32, verse chapter 8, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32 through 36. This is what it says. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for Barat are they to keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Barak is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of Yahuwah. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul, and all they that hate me love death. Wow. <laughs> She said, she said, but she says, and the man that, that's daily at my gates. This is the type, the way we supposed, we supposed to be daily at the gate of wisdom, trying to get something from wisdom, right? Daily, waiting at the post of my door is what she said. She said, you should be daily at my gates, at my door, trying to get something from wisdom. Wow. Awesome, huh? Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I did have one more passage here. This is a, it's not that long, but I just want to read it real quickly. I can read this one. Okay. This Hallelujah. is Proverbs chapter 9, and I'm going to read 1 through 11. And listen to this. Pay attention. This is very important that you get this. 
It says, wisdom has built of her house. She have hewn down, um, she have hewn out of her seven pillars. She have killed her beasts. She have mingled her wine. She have also flourished at, fur, furnished her table. Listen to what it said. Now she furnished her table. Okay. She have set forth her maidens. She craft upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn to hither. For as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat my bread and drink the wine which I have mingled. Wow. So basically she said, I have my table set. <laughs> she said, I got my table set. Right? You hungry? <laughs> Y'all hungry out there? Huh? Hallelujah. Wisdom is saying, I have my table set. It's set for you. I have the choice wine mingled, right? I don't know what that means, mingled wine. <laughs> it says, eat my bread. I have bread set. I have we got the, the, the meat set at the table is furnished, right? She says she have killed her beast. So it works, it's meat on the table too. Not just bread, wine, it's meat. She said, I've killed my feast, right? Come eat my bread and drink my wine, which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live. Go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to, un to, getteth to himself shame. And he that rebuketh, rebuketh a wicked man getteth to himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. Wow. Mm -hmm. Give instruction to a wise man and he will yet be wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. There it, it is, is again. again. Yep. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. By me, thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. Wow. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou, thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hallelujah. That's pretty inspiring to know that wisdom is just waiting for us. Yes, hallelujah. To make a move. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Well, we apologize for all of the buffering and the freezing up. Yeah, there. yeah. I just, I don't know what to say about it, but I, we are. I am going to upload the video again. Um, where it'll be free of buffering and all of the stuff that you see. It'll be free of it. It'll probably go in sometime today. If you want to rewatch it, you can rewatch it later on. But it'll totally be free of all of the stuff that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Yes. We will figure out another way to get things done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. It must be busy today or something, the internet or something. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm hardline in, so this isn't wireless. So what can I say? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we love you all, family, and we thank yes. you all for joining us on this Shabbat. Yes. And we are thankful to you for a very mild winter so far. Uh, we still have some time yet to go, but so far it's been very mild. We're grateful for that. Um, we want you all to enjoy the rest of your day. Relax, do whatever you're going to do. Sing, praise Yah. Yes. Um, this is the, the last day of the prayer that we had uh, that followed the three days of fasting. Yes. And um, within that, we have included definitely some uh, praise and worship. Um, at some point, uh, many of you have been asking uh, for the children to sing and uh, present some of that to you all. So we're going to continue to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to continue to work on that. And um, when we get a chance, we will share some of that with you all. Yes. Um, other than what we do on uh, Shabbat. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, I just want to ask you one last question. Wisdom is calling. Will, will you, you answer, answer the, the call? call? <laughs> 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 well, that no family, we're going to sing. We love you and we shalom. Love you. Shabbat shalom, family.